I don't know where the extra sound's coming from. So I'm it's still getting it through my. It's out. It's off now. Well, I'm still hearing it, so I don't know where it's coming from. Well, I don't hear you. But that good was... evening and welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. Yes, yeah, I've still got an echo. It was coming from Twitch. Twitch. We're also on Twitch, folks. Maybe, maybe not. I, I still, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually unmuted it when I thought I was muting it, and that's well, why. Well, this computer is muted, and so yeah, I'm closed down all over the place. So it's not for me. Now. Okay, so I don't hear it now. Yeah, I thought it was from two places from me. Nope, I still hear it. Okay. It's a mystery to me. Nothing else. Well, Test. I don't know where it's One, coming two, from, three. but it was muted. It's not coming from me. Test. One, two, three. Now I have to figure out how to get... Okay, so it seems to have gone away. So good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. Um, we're going to talk about some 3D printing tonight. Uh, I was hoping Donna would be here, but uh, she has some things with some grandkids, which is understandable. When I get things with my grandkids, I take off too. So, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, I had recently gotten the V400 uh, to do a review on it and. I was very impressed with it. Uh, Jim was looking for a new 3D printer, so he ended up buying one within the last few days. And then Donna, because uh, I told her about the V400 uh, that was on sale on Amazon, or and she ended up, I think she's had hers for, what, a couple of months now, guys? At least two or three months? At Something least, like yeah. 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 She's had hers for a while, and she loves hers. So I've only had mine for about a week, less than a week now, I think it is. And then Jim's had his in the last, like, couple of days. When did you get yours? Uh, two days ago. Two days ago. So. Yeah. I put it together yeah, yesterday. I, yeah, so we're. I'm quite impressed with it. And I will actually tell you, and I think Joan will concur, and I was hoping Don would be on tonight. If you are looking for a 3D printer that is fast and has quality and won't break the bank, I mean, $599, I'm not saying that's a, not a chuck of change, but when you compare it to the bamboo, which is like $1,500, uh, the, like the carbon or whatever, the PS1 is even like at $1,000, I think it is. So, uh, And I will put it up against them as far as speed. And quality, I, I've done some stuff, and I'm impressed with the quality. But for $590, now it auto bed levels. It uh, easy to change filament. It has a clipper type interface, which is a lot better than the Marlin interfaces. And I can show it off tonight if, uh, if I get a chance. But, yeah, I, I would say if you're looking for a, a 3D printer, uh, for around the six hundred dollar mark, then and Amazon has it and it's free shipping. You usually get it in one to two days. Jim got his in one day. I think it took me. Uh, uh, well, the company sent it to me, so it took it three or four days from the time they told me I was going to get it. So, but Jim, you said on Amazon you got it what within um, next day in the morning. Next Oops, day, love next yeah. Day. Yep. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Don't you just love? It? It's like. Uh, so, um, you know, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. As for right now, uh, Al, tell us where we can find you. Uh, Al Forte, Odessa Woodworking and Maker Shop, Kilroy 79763, all over the place, guys. Um, I don't know if I'm going to stream tomorrow, but uh, might be late. But anyway, I uh, stream 2 p.m. Sunday and uh, here Saturday night. Paul, you're up. You keep misleading the people. Uh oh, 2 p.m. No. Central. Come on, real time, real time. Real time is 3 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Paul Collis, Paul's Messy Workshop. And you can find me on YouTube and Instagram. And Jim, you're next. Uh, Jim Shears Driveway Workshop. And you can find me here in my garage. <laughs> it's finally getting warm enough to do this out in the garage. Uh, Chris. Yep. Hey, guys. Chris, the old cranky workshop. You find me on Facebook and YouTube. And to prove I am working on a video, <laughs> here is my cordless mic. We spent the entire afternoon fighting it, but it's in the works. So. We'll be up and running, hopefully by next Friday. And Dixon. Hi, I'm Dixon Hoffman. You can find me at hoffmansignsanddecals.com and Facebook. Uh, so Lynn's handcrafted wood design is out there. Uh, Aussie man. Uh, Dan Inge from Dan Inge Woodworking, JJE. Uh, James Parker. Going down through it, trying to figure out. Okay. So, yeah. Um, listen, if you're scared, trying to figure out. and this is the first one of the thing I want to say, if you're worried or scared about getting into the world of 3D printing, to be honest with you, it's not that hard and not that bad especially when you buy a machine like the v400 and in you and i know 600 bucks is a chunk of change for some people but my point being is the quality of the printer is there and the uh options that it has like the auto bed leveling that's a plus on any machine so you don't have to go through the thing with the ender 3. uh i love my ender 3 don't get me wrong but it takes a while for you to understand how to print on one of those printers and to learn how to bed level it. Uh, all joking aside, it's not just something that you really have to watch a lot of videos. You really have to understand what's going on. You have to be knowledgeable of uh, engineering and kind of things where, I mean, because just minute amount leveling on the bed means a big difference where with the V400 from Flusen, it auto, auto bed levels. So, uh, and I broke my cherry, so to speak, on the Ender 3. And I love my Ender 3. I still got it. It's sitting right, right here. I'll show you. It's still sitting right here in the room, right there. Still got my little Ender 3. And guess what? It printed. I print these little sharks for the kids at uh, Sunday school. And give them away. It printed all these. I have it printed them all the time. Pink, red. You know, I, and, and the quality is great. I can't, can't say enough. It's just slow. Uh, so, but if you want something fast, I mean, really take a look at the V4. And I'm not getting paid for this. Now, I will admit I accept monetary compensations, but if it wasn't good, I would actually tell you. I've run into some products that I made reviews and they never sent me anything else. So <laughs> that'll tell you right there. I, I'm not going to uh, tell you something I don't believe in. And then Jim, I uh, told him about it. And what do you think about the V400? Yeah, no, I, I really like the thing a lot. I mean, I've got it right here. I was trying to print something out so you could watch the speed it was printing at, but it's so fast that it finished it before the show started. So let me grab it real quick. And while he's doing that, I'm going to change my camera view because I do have something being printed. So I printed this guy. Here, let me change you to full view. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Two hours, 57 minutes. Oh, they have a removable plate? That's nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this thing has got, like, everything that you've ever, like, hodgepodge together on a 3D printer before. It comes with this thing. So let me try to get this off here without breaking anything on it. Uh, bend it a few times. Yeah. I've learned don't bend it hard, but bend it back and forth a few times, and it starts breaking loose. Yeah, it's popping off. All right, there you go. Yeah. So, uh. 
Yeah, it's got a, it's printed on a raft. So I'll have to go through and clean the raft off. But, you know, the head's lobbing around like he's drunk, just like it should. Right. But I mean, the detail, this is, this was at full speed with, you know, like, um, what do you call it? You know, it's not like a high quality print speed or anything. So this was printed out at full speed, but I don't know if you can see how good the scaling and stuff is. On yeah, you probably did the normal, which is 2.0, I believe it is. Yeah, but this thing was running at 400 millimeters per second. Yeah, but still at 2.0, it has quality, trust me. Yeah, yeah, but it's it does a really good job. The first thing I printed with it, was a Benchy, you know, everybody grabs a Benchy and prints it, but no, I didn't print, I'd never print a Benchy. If you look in here, you know, the uh, the circles for the portholes are all you know concentric, they're all nice. Uh, you've got the the width on this is concentric with the middle circle there, so that's pretty pretty hard for it to do. You know, there's no rafts or not rafts, there's no supports or anything on this, but. I mean, even the side, the sides came out pretty smooth for as fast as it was running. And then uh, it's got these little, there's like the, the seal, the roof slat kind of effect on it. It's got yeah, a, nice. uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's got a herringbone pattern along the edge too that you can see. And then up on the front deck, I don't know if it's light in here to see that, but. The front deck, it looks, you can see like deck boards on the, on the thing. It did a really nice job on that. And then I printed a 20 millimeter calibration cube just to make sure that it was, you know, printing the width that it should. And it is pretty good. I don't know if you can see the 20 on there, but it came right, came right out at 20 millimeters. So. Yeah, it's hard cool. for you guys to see because it's all backwards. But yeah, it, yeah, I mean it. It prints great, prints fast. So yeah, I can't say uh, enough good stuff about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm impressed with it. Yeah, it was really easy to put together. I did yeah, a video so it, on putting it together. I I'm going to try to compile it and post it. So yeah, uh, if you're looking at wanting to get into the 3d realm of printing and i would suggest you do it's a lot of fun uh the initial cost of the machine uh 600 bucks but then your rolls of filament are like 20 bucks 30 bucks depending on what uh i like his viruses i still want that i gotta figure out where you got that from uh <laughs> dixon um so, but if you buy a roll of filament, let's say it, the expensive ones that are 30 bucks. And uh, here, I'll go ahead and get a, a roll of filament out. Uh, this is a Sun Lu, and this is, I think, the two, uh, 2 kg or 2 kilograms or whatever you want to put rolls. This is uh, this was actually I got this on sale for like seventeen ninety nine, but let's say you pay thirty bucks for it, and here's your roll of filament. Okay, this will print. What are you saying, Dixie Dixon? Uh, 30, 40, 50 prints at least. Oh, oh yeah, if you were printing this virus, you're going to get at least forty. Yeah. When I used to give quotes, I would I would weigh an empty roll, weigh a full roll, and then weigh my part, and I knew exactly how much it was costing. And right. So you're looking at getting forty prints, roughly, give or take, Easy. depending on their size, out of this roll for thirty bucks. So you invested thirty bucks, six hundred bucks, and you're going to have a lot of fun. I print, and I told them before. I print. I do uh, security and the uh, uh, for the uh, kids in Sunday school and children's church, and I watch after them. And I print these little sharks and give them away to all the little kids if they're having a bad day. And I know I've said this before, but 
uh, I, I can print like I could. I don't know. I could probably print. I, I I'm thinking a hundred of them out of that roll. And so you're talking about pennies, depending on the size. Now, if you're going to print something in a uh, bigger like uh, this, you may use a lot more filament. But my point being, this is like this may have cost me a dollar, maybe a dollar and fifty in filament filament uh to print this so it's not an expensive and don't get into uh, they uh, reading all these sites that i had to have lights on mine i had that i mine are all pretty much stock i don't get into that have to put lights on and i don't get into that have to print everything green if i like the color green for every little knob and every little screw you change all that kind of crap it's a machine yeah, treat it like a machine. And so one thing I do like about this, this was printed on the uh, V400 is, and this is the mushroom from Mario or Mario, however you want to put it. Now the three white dots, I don't have a multi-printer machining. It was printed on the V400. All three white dots were printed separately. The top was printed separately. The brown bottom was printed separately. And the eyes were printed separately. Actually, I printed all three white dots and the eyes at the same time on the same bed. But look at this. Hey, we have a question out there. I know the answer, but I'll let you guys talk about it. Uh, yeah. is, are they are they enclosed, or are they is the printer enclosed or not enclosed? No, it's open. It's open to air. Uh, but look, this is a little box so you can put stuff in and hide stuff. And it prints the threads. And the threads work right off the machine. So it's like, it's so cool. Uh, no, they are not enclosed. Uh, when you print things like, uh, Dixon, help me out here. Why would you need an enclosed machine? For stuff like ABS that you need high temperatures. And it has to shrink slowly as it as the heater shuts down in that. And then the ABS parts you can stick outside in the sun and they won't get soft on you, like PLA. You don't even really need a heated bed. It's 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 more convenient with PLA, but it, you don't need one because then you can put a little glue stick down or put a brim on it, like that benchy that that Jim just showed. And right. Then you don't have to. Yeah, so in certain things that you print, nylon, for instance, would nylon it? They need a print, uh, heated environment. Yes, nylon is one of the hardest things to print. They used to print with nylon, and it has to stay a hundred percent sealed and dry. And you'll know when you start printing with it if it if it uh, starts popping like Rice Krispies, then it's no good. It's it's too wet. And the cool thing about nylon is I did a part for uh, a production part for down at for this company. When I got done with it, you could take that piece of nylon and hit it with a hammer. And I mean, you can hit it and it will not break with the nylon. Jeez, really? <laughs> so it's so, yeah, so, so, so you don't have to have that environment for the V400 and PLA. Right. And that's, yeah, for, I mean, I have some pet G and I have some, uh, an another one that I bought that I tried uh, on uh, a QQS. The pet G did work on the QQS, by the way. You got flu sun QQS. But uh, you don't need an enclosed environment for uh, PLA. Uh, even pet G, you don't need an enclosed environment. Uh, I didn't have an enclosed environment. Uh, okay. guys, wood crafting shops that don't have a 3D printer, and I'm not interested in getting one. And good night, everyone. Well, see you later, alligator. Smile a while, crocodile. So, I mean, yeah, All we uh, this is we get into more than just woodworking around here. Um, uh, Brian Woodward says, I love my bamboo P1S with AMS being able to do. Four color prints is awesome. Yes. And I agree with you, Brian. The bamboo with the uh, AMS machine is awesome. I don't disagree whatsoever. Uh, 
but uh, to be able to change colors midstream, in other words, you could have printed this uh, mushroom from Mario uh, in one print and it do all the colors at one time. So, you know, bamboo is an excellent machine. I, I, I just don't, I mean, I want to try one and I probably might buy one in the future, but I just don't have a need for it. Okay, uh, bamboo, send him, send him a printer. He'll change his mind. Yeah, change my mind. Send me one and let me, let me experiment with it and I'll, I'll see. But uh, yeah. But right now the Flusen is I'm I'm in love with them. Like I said, Dixon's the first one that turned me on to the Flusen uh, QQS was the first one I bought. I had the I had bought the uh, Ender three, then I changed and bought the QQS, and it was like twice as fast as the Ender three. So I was like, holy crap, this thing's. And how much is the QQS? Uh, they are right now. Uh, let me go first off. I want to check Amazon because Amazon has deals that uh, nobody else has. FL Sun QQS Enter. V400. The reason I asked Russ is. is it's one thing to go and buy a five hundred, six hundred dollars three D printer, oh, I, but but another thing is buying an entry level printer to find out if you're going to like it. Because I wouldn't be too happy with myself if I spent six hundred dollars on a printer just great. to find out I hated it. Well, yeah. here I agree with you, uh, Al. But uh, hold on, let me. Uh, it, they don't even have them listed in um, Amazon. Paul. Yes. Al. Paul. Uh, 3D printers. Hold on. Give me one second. I'm pulling it up. Super Racer Ultra High V400 and close. They're not Paul. even listing in the QQS anymore. Russ. Yes. But it's yeah, just like it, you know, it's like buying a laser or a CNC right. to go buy a top of the line one first when you're not even sure you're going to like it. Where you could, for a couple hundred bucks, you can buy an entry level to see if you're going to like it and then go from there. Well, let yeah. me interject this if you do that and you buy the Ender 3, you the Ender 3, even though it's an entry level, requires so much tinkering and playing with to get it to print right. I you've got to learn how to bed level. With you. I've got a, yeah, you've got to learn how to yeah. bed level. You've got to learn how to temperature, all that other stuff. So my point being, with the QQ Pro or the FL Flu Sun, you put it together, you bed level it, you set the Z height, and you print. There is no other thing about so, it. So Paul needs to teach Jim how to how to not drop out of uh, <laughs> the yeah. stream. Yeah, the stream. Yeah, don't don't so, hit that button, Jim. Yeah, I'm I'm not disagreeing with you, Paul, in any way, shape, or form. But the flu flu sun makes them so easy to work with. Compared to the Ender, because I started with an Ender, and if it wasn't for uh, Al and Jim, and especially Dixon, helping me with uh, learning how to use it and watching a ton of videos on uh, YouTube, uh, it would. I I'm in a group called 3D Printers um, Anonymous. No. <laughs> Oh, no, no, beginning or learning 3D printing or whatever. And their biggest thing is everybody's buying the $189 or $169 Ender 3. And mm -hmm. their biggest thing is how the heck do you use this thing? And we'll all refer them to here's what you need to watch. And they come back three weeks later and say, 
I'm still having the same problem. So the learning curve for an ender is not easy. But isn't the tinkering and, and learning more about it part of the hobby? I'm not going to disagree yes, with you, right, but it right. turns a lot of people right. off and they don't want to. Yeah. They feel that they should be able to plug a machine in and make it work. And the end so of really requires know how it works. They just want it to work. Yeah, you exactly. You can do that with the average one you buy now. The Ender 3 is an older model. Right, that, right. That was one of the best ones, but you could buy it. That You could buy an FL Sun, take it out of the box, and it'll print awesome. It'll print. Exactly. Can, most yeah, printers now you can pull out the box and you're ready to go. It's not like yeah. it used to be. Yeah. yeah. That's my, my point being is you have to spend a couple extra bucks, but it's pretty well you put it. I put the V400 together. Did nothing to it other than let it auto level, set the Z height, and I didn't print the normal benchy like Jim as a cheap shot print that little little tugboat thing. I still what was the first thing I printed? I'm trying to find it. Uh, it was a pretty complicated print, wasn't it? And wasn't it one of these that you printed first? No, that wasn't the first thing. It was one it thing before that. But that was the second thing I printed and never made a change on it. And it printed it perfectly. Okay. I just yeah, weighed a box the of... Benchies, the Benchy's got a lot of geometry. Well, I'm not going to disagree with you, but I printed so many damn yeah. Benchy's. I'm tired of printing Benchy's. <laughs> I I, you're, a boat lover, you're a boat lover. I can't help you with there, but... Uh, what is that, Paul? Hold on. Let me make you full screen. I want to see that. That's a Volkswagen engine. Oh, cool. <laughs> that is. That is. It is. <laughs> it's a on it and everything. Would you print that on the Ender? No, I printed it on my CR10. Oh, CR10. Oh, now, Creality, the CR10 is a damn nice. But now, don't you have to do a lot of adjustments to get that? Don't you have the bed leveling and everything on the CR10? I level it about once a year. No, yeah. but my point being is, in the beginning, you had to level it. Yes. Yeah. It's not auto bed leveling, in other words. It, it's uh, it's semi auto bed leveling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Push yeah, yeah. And then it goes to this spot, and you level it, and then it goes to this spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got slide a piece yeah. of paper under it, and yeah, yeah. That, that works. Well, I got, I, yeah, no, that was the next great generation of printers. Was that yeah. this is yeah, done? Al's got to show thing. off his damn. This, what is this? Al? This is done on an Ender, and it's yeah. rough. It's not it's not perfect, but it's not the fly. And it took a long time. But but it's an ender. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's yeah. order. Yeah. Look how I'm not I'm just not yeah. discounting. Don't get me wrong. I'm not yeah. discounting the enders. I know what I'm trying to say is if you want to buy an ender, be prepared to put the time and the effort into making it work and print good and right. Okay, and I that, just did. I that, just, I just weighed true with laser. Hold on. Laser. Oh, it, I'm not discounting that. I'm not discounting yes, that. What are you showing, Dixon? I just did the, the weight calculations, and out of one box, you could get 40 of these. That's pretty yeah. wow. Wow. 40 of that's these out of good. one box. And uh, by one, the way, yeah, one roll, one roll of and, filament. And, and that prints in two pieces, right? Yeah, and you and can get this full you know. piece. Uh, you can get 40 of them out of one roll. Yeah. That's pretty that good. Solutech printer, uh, uh, I'm sorry, filament is is probably some of the best filament I have seen. I've, I've tried yeah. Creality. I've tried the cheap stuff, the really mm -hmm. expensive stuff. That stuff is really good that he's that he's. And you using. can get it for 16 of, bucks a roll now. Yeah. I was buying yeah. piles of it for 16 bucks a roll. Yep. I was a little uh, Lens handcrafted works. Shop wants to know, is there a difference between firmware and different printers? Yes. yes and no. The majority of your printers, including all the enders and everything, use a Marlin base uh, firmware type situation. There's yeah. also a clipper, uh, which I'm beginning to learn about, which the... Uh, 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 the V400 uses, and what is the B? Um, what we were talking about the bamboo, 
Bamboo. Bamboo. Bamboo uses... And uh, that that four uses Clipper with Clipper. a 30, 32 board processor. That's why it's so fast. You right. have to have that. Otherwise, you'd see your you'd see your Delta going like this and stuttering if you didn't have that thirty two bit processor. Right. So this, between the two of them, there that's the Marlin and the Clipper is kind of like. I mean, there's others out there that people can change and put on. I've seen bamboos running some other stuff, or not bamboos, but Ender's running some other stuff. Actually, I, I saw a guy putting Clipper onto a bamboo, or not a bamboo, an Ender. And I'm like, really? Yeah. And uh, so it's anything's possible if you're into this, be able to create your own version of the software to make the thing run. Yeah. But the predominant is Clipper and Bam um, Marlin. Um, Marlin, Marlin. This, uh, all, was, this was yep. made 10 years ago on that Ender 3 with Ninja Flex, but I had to cheat. I ran it only 30% feed, uh, feed rate. It's a rubber. It's Ninja Flex, so it's flexible. This tire was printed 10 years ago on an Ender 3, and it's flexible, and I had to turn it down to 30% feed rate. And on that, where it feeds into that feeder, that Bowden tube, I made a V. I, I sanded it off like a V so that the, the flexible filament would feed into the feeder. Otherwise, it would jam up there. Right, I, right. I modified it a little bit on the feeder and turned it down to 30%, and I could do Ninja Flex on that Ender 3. But that just goes to show you, like Russ was saying. Well, you know, much you want to yeah, but it. you see, now that's because Dixon was fully knowledgeable and understood what was going on and was able to alter things to make it work. Right. If you're stepping into the 3D world, once again, I'm not discounting Ender in any way, shape, or form. I cut my teeth on an Ender. Ender 3 version 2 is what I got sitting over there. Uh, and I, I love it. I, my son asked me, why don't you give me the Ender 3 and let me print some three things? And I don't want to give it up because it was my first printer. But in the same aspect, uh, you know, it, it required a lot of learning. I had to ask Dixon a lot of questions. And I think I asked Al some questions. And I even think I asked Jim some questions. I went through a lot of and watched a lot of YouTube videos to be able to learn how to use that thing and use it right and uh, level the bed and everything. So yeah, this this might have been touched on, but Brian and, and, and I, I'm I'm a good example of this. Brian says that getting the wrong printer to start with is uh, uh, is almost like two separate uh, hobbies a printer printing. Right. And building. Yeah. And there's the tech part and the operator part. And sometimes yeah. you have to be both. And maybe not with the FL sign. Maybe more with, with the, the manual right. printers, etc. Well, and they're making the printers, even including the bamboo, uh, and their Creality is now coming out with it also, where the printers are pretty well plug and play. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have the basic settings. They auto bed level, you put the pr stuff in, and then you can tweak it from there, but it's more plug and play. The Ender 3 was not a plug and play. I mean, it, you could plug it in and put the PLA and turn it on and it'll tell it to print, but God knows what you get out of it if you didn't set it up right. You should try building a Folger Tech FT5 yeah, I'll from bet. Scratch. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't even think about it, so... But yes, so what do you want? Do you want to spend a cup $189 or $169 for an Ender 3 and be frustrated or spend the $599 and plug and play? I'm a cheap I mean, best, that's so I'll go with the first option. Huh? <laughs> I'm cheap, so What'd I'll go with the first Chris? option. Oh, yeah. Well, then best. you're going to spend hours and hours and hours. <laughs> And get frustrated. Trust me, I, would, I threw my hands that's what up. I would want, I want, oh, I, I know. I threw I'm my hands up. I just plug it in and watch it. So, and I watched a that's lot me. of video. Finally, one video I watched made a lot of sense, and I have to think of the guy's name, and I can't. And he talked about how to bed level, 
And finally, I went in to Tinkercad and created squares on the bed, one right after another for it to print. And I started letting it print and watching the squares print. And I would adjust the bed manually as it was printing till I got that somewhat within close and then started tuning it in. And once I understood how you level the bed on an Indra 3, it was like light bulb moment. And now it's like, and first, another thing, you can't mess with that bed. When I take off my uh, a plate off the Indra 3 to take the uh, uh, part off, I'm very careful not to just ram, ram into it and bump it. I mean, it, it. don't get me wrong. You don't have to be a surgeon and take it off. But in the same aspect, you don't want to bump the hell out of it because it'll knock it out of level. But I have I have not leveled that Ender 3 right now in over two years. And it still prints the same. Because I take the bed off real nice and easy. I take the print off the bed. Then I put the bed back on and hook it back up and yeah, and it still just keeps going over and over and over. So, um, it is, it's what she, uh, do you want to buy a, a 20 watt laser or do you want to buy a 100 watt laser? That's the same thing in 3D printing. It is what it is. Uh, what, what do you want to spend and where do you want to go at from that point on? And what do you want to do with it? Yeah, and what do you want to do with it? Yep. So, I mean, I'm fortunate enough in my situation where I have enough people and viewers and I do enough things out there that even to this day, even though I backed out of my channel a lot and not done as near as much, when I got won the racer in a contest and I did a few videos on I ended up getting contacted. Would you like to uh, review the uh, V400? I'm like, well, hell yeah. Sure. Would Not a problem. Like, like global nuclear war. Yeah. So. What movie is that from, boys and girls? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, Matthew Broderick was in it. Uh, yes. But, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Would you like to play a game? Is that the one you're Four talking games. about? Yes. Yes. Four yes. Games. Would you like to play a game? Yes. Yeah. He broke in into a nuclear uh, a plant that was uh, trying to run our a nuclear. Uh, they were trying to set up a um, uh, a computer to run all the nuclear warheads in the time of war, and they gave it a chess game which and uh, put it against itself which is impossible to win because it kept on got it getting stalemate every time it tried to play the chess game because it was against itself so to speak uh chess is a very unique type of game uh and so he broke into it and it was uh, would you like to play a game thermal yeah. nuclear war yeah yep. I love that. I love how he had the little uh, the little car, remote control car, when he ran it in there, and they got the uh, nuclear stuff out of it, and then he ran it outside and ran it through the storm drain to get out of there. <laughs> that was awesome. If you haven't watched that movie, you need to go watch it. Plug in, you have to play for hours to get it right. No, that's not true, Lynn. Plug and play means I put the V400 together. I stuck a piece of PLA, a roll of PLA in it. I did have to level the bed, and and which it did it itself, but you have to set the Z height. The Z height is the nozzle's height as it comes down to the bed. And you put a piece of paper underneath on the bed, and you keep lowering the uh, nozzle to the point that it, it starts rubbing. It rubs pretty good. Once that hits, you hit a button. It says save, and that's your Z height. It goes up, and you hit, you put a file in, you hit print. That's it. So, 
Uh, how many printers do I have? I have now I have four 3D printers. Oh, no, five. Uh, if you want to include the resin printer, I have five. I have a resin printer and 40 FDM. FDM is uh, filament printers. So four FDM and one resin. So... Dan Inge says, no, you don't, Dan. I can put you into, uh, if you've got the money, I can put you into a V400 and you'll be printing in within two to three days. For us, do you ever sell used cars? Get... Huh? Yeah. Do you ever sell used cars? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> you can print in a couple of hours once you pull it out. Well, once you put it together, yes. But, I mean, it's... The V400, I found, uh, Jim, I found the V400 easy to put together. Yeah, it was. I, what really got me is because, you know, anybody that's put a grill together or something from China, you know, you know how hard it is to line holes up and stuff. Man, these these hex head screws just dropped right into holes. Yes, right. yes. Uh, man, the... The precision on the machining and everything on these things was yes. Just I didn't have a screw that cross threaded or anything on the V four hundred. Yep. It all went together. Yeah, it went right in together without any problem. You the need a, you need your dining place. room. You need your dining room table. This yeah. thing is about four foot tall. It's not that. It's point. a beast. I don't yeah. know. It's damn near close to four foot tall. I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> Yeah, the technology came a long way. No, oh, yeah. it's not oh, like yeah, it yeah. used to be. That's why you got more people getting into it. Because it's like everything else, it, it made it a lot easier. So how tall is it with the roll? It's a little over oh, with the roll. Almost four feet. Yeah. yeah. So you need a dining room table to put it together. But pretty much you have the top end and the bottom end. And you orient them in place, and then you have rails that go the full length between the top and the bottom end, and there's three of them. So you turn it to an orientation, you screw, there's eight screws to, to uh, for the top uh, rail, there's eight screws on the second rail, there's eight screws on the third rail. You just rotate it around and put all three rails on the outside. And then you pretty well stand it up and finish the assembly. Yeah, it's a not cable that. bundle. A cable bundle you have to push through one of the rails to get yeah. to the head. Other, yeah. That was the hardest part. Yeah. <laughs> push it yeah, I mean, it's not that. I'll ride and push it in. Work fine. Uh, let me go ahead and I want to go ahead and change this. I, I've got one. Settings, yeah, I've got something over here going with. This is the V400 that is printing a, a gnome. A gnome? Yeah, yeah. Did, you see what, did you see what Brian Woodward said? No. He, I have a Salvo SV06 as well, and that... This was 15 minutes from opening the box. He was printing with it already, reliable, and he only paid 190 bucks. Nice. It's a copycat. That's of the, good. Uh, is is it a copy of Prusa? Yeah. The Prusa. That's good. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, but that is the V400 printing a gnome. Uh, the the pad that you see in front is the clipper pad, which controls it. If you, I will go ahead and walk over there and just show you a few things about it. Um, Did you hook your Wi-Fi up to it? Not yet. <laughs> uh, that the clipper pad that gives you all the information about what's going on it's 47 cent fleet tells you temperature gives you all the information on what's going on and then i'll give you a little sneak peek on what the actual print 
looks like as it's building it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how. Oh, there we are. Not only the new software, but you have an upper hand with a Delta because right off the bat, they print 25% faster than a bed slinger. Right. So you can see how quick it is. This was made in vase mode with Kira years ago. So because it was done in vase mode, it was done in like five, six hours because it just keeps going around and around. It doesn't stop. That's pretty cool. How thick is that? Oh, that's, cool. that's got to be, that is as thick as the point tool, that really thin. This is the Is it really? Is yeah. it really? So, so a layer point, height, basically, point or two, half a yeah. nozzle. Yep. Yeah. That's why it's so thin, but it's it's amazing. It's somewhat flexible. And got a lot of volume in it. Yeah. Since there's some dead time, this is what you had to put up with when they when they did have 3D printers here in the U.S. yet. And they started in Germany. Joe Prusa, this is a copycat. I, I made the metal frames. This, this is a copycat of the a bed slinger, a Joe Prusa printer. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> oh, it went to a different video. How oh, I just love... Did have they the, didn't the have. programs? The, the programs, Lynn. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, repositories. One of them is Thingiverse, and you can get stuff for Thingy on Thingiverse for 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 uh, uh, laser cutters also. Uh, but mostly they're STLs for for 3D printing. And there's Thangs. There's there's a uh, uh, my mini factory, I think. I can't, yep. I can't remember. But there's a lot of Pulse, different there's places. Pulse, my mini Pulse. factory. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different places to get um, the 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 programs, but I, I'm assuming you mean the actual um, STL uh, file. STLs, yeah. Yeah. About uh, about it's got to be eight years ago. What was that Ford that came out with, and then they discontinued? They came out with it with uh, uh, my daughter had one, and then they came out with it again a couple years ago. Well, my boss couldn't get parts, and he broke the vent. A Ford Taurus. They the came course, out yeah. with it a couple yeah. years. He bought a brand new one, and then they stopped again making them. And he broke his vent inside his car. So here it is. I 3D printed one for his car. There's the clip. And see, that's the perfect thing to use to use 3D printing for. If you can find the, the STL for, for whatever parts you need, you can print them. You can do them. Yeah, you don't. I catted this all up from the broken one, but you don't have oh. to. You can download them like I always or, or you can draw it yourself like Dixon did. Yes. I'll cat it up. Here's some uh, mini. Okay, mini I'd like to interject that uh, something into that real quick because uh, they were talking about programs uh, that's kind of programs are like Cura, Idea Maker. Uh, what's the one for a uh, Cura makes this reality, but there's another one. Uh, yeah, well, those are slicers. Yeah, those are slices. That's what I'm trying to say. Those are yeah. the programs that you use for your printer. The STL files are where you get from Thingiverse, you get from Colts, you get from uh, Idea, uh, not Idea Maker, but there's another one. Uh, Bamboo Labs has their own. What is that called? It's not Idea Maker, but anyway, so what you do is you. You search the internet. I just typed in the first day I ever wanted one as I typed in free STL or 3D STL. And 
boom, all these websites show up. And you can get a ton of free 3D files. But once you get your 3D file, which is the STL, you need to bring it into a program called a slicer. I like Cura. I use Cura. I've used Idea Maker. I use um, another one for uh, my um, resin printing. Uh, can't even think of it right off the bat. That's the, that's the Egalu. That's the, that's the um, I got it right here. On it's like Hichatu or something like that. Or? No, it's. No, they got cheat. He, I think you got cheat, cheat, cheaty, cheaty, or what is it? Yeah, cheaty? I got one of those. But anyway, but I my point is, one. you need a slicer to be able Cheetah to. Box. Cheetah box. Take, That's it. Yeah. Cheetah you need box. a slicer to be able to take that STL. The STL file is what you want to print. It is the file that has all the stuff in it that makes that dragon, makes this little uh, Mario mushroom <clears throat> box what it is. So you take that STL file that you downloaded and you put it into the slicer and the slicer will turn it into something that your 3D printer can now use and it's called a G-code. The G code is what you put into your printer and it reads it and prints this. So you need to find the STL file, which is a lot of them, a ton of them are free. This was free on the internet. Uh, this was free on the internet, a T-Rex skeleton. Uh, this giant squid that I just printed the other day was free on the internet. He's a giant squid. Uh, there's tons of free STL files on the internet. Then you take it in. To, and uh, I love Cura. I've learned to use Cura. I've learned to walk around it. I know what it's like. I got to understand it. Idea Maker is the second one I like. Then you download Cura is free. Idea Maker is actually free. You download those slicers, which are free. You put your file into it. It'll ask you what kind of printer you have. You have to tell it what kind of printer you have. And most of the normal printers are on the market today are there in that slicer. And so you choose uh, uh, FL Sun V400. And then you put that file in there. And then it slices it. And it tells you how long it's going to take. And off you go. And then you down that download that file onto an SD card, uh, which most printers use, and you put the SD card in your printer and print it. So it's not that hard. A slicer? No, you have to download a slicer from the internet. It's and it comes free, but it does not come with the free. printer because you have to choose what slicer you want. And that's the reason they don't sell a slicer with the printer because you have to choose which one you like. One of my customers 3D printed a part from a rigid table. So yes, you can print parts for anything. Uh, but there is the STL is the file. This was printed from an STL. This was printed from an STL. The STL is the printable file. Just like in a CNC, I can download a file and put it into my CNC program and the pro CNC knows how to cut it. You download this file, put it into the slicer and the slicer tells the 3D printer how to print it. And uh, there's so many slicers out there, and they're all free. You don't have to pay a nothing. You don't have to pay nothing. Ninety, I'd say ninety percent, because I do files buy some files uh, uh, from time to time because I just like the way they look. But most of the files I buy are a dollar or less. They're like ninety three cents or a dollar and fifty cents. It, so, it's much. It's much better to buy it if, so you don't have to do it in some kind of CAD program because it's just yeah 
takes you way yeah. too long to do that. I mean, I have printed. Uh, here's my Triceratops that I printed. Hey, we got a request out there for you, Russ. Huh? Jimbo wants you to print a Florida Gator for him. Uh oh. <laughs> this I Prusa Slicer, yeah. Hey, I print. Can I print a Florida? Uh, yeah, I can print a Florida Gator. You damn straight, I can print a Florida Gator. I've got some numerous ones I've printed. My son's even said, I want you to print me one of these. I'm like, yeah, I printed them. But this is my Triceratops. Uh, this is my uh, uh, turtle. I mean, I have so many. This is my spider with tennis shoes. <laughs> you know, uh, I have just... I have printed so much stuff. My wife says, how do you, uh, this is the latest thing that I thought was really cool as crap was, uh, this squid articulating squid. Let me show him in full on the, this was printed on the V 400. That's nice. A lot of neat stuff. Yeah. <laughs> If you'll notice, I printed in that new filament I'm trying, which is like, it's half and Whoa. half. You know how uh, some of the 3D filament filaments have, um, like it'll go pink for a while, then blue for a while? This is half and half. The actual filament has half blue on the left and half red on the right. right. Yeah, so that's... look how the front printed red, but the back printed blue. Rainbow, rainbow filament. Yeah, that's what they yep. can look it up if they want to. Hey, yeah. Russ, Jimbo is wondering how much would you charge to print that? <laughs> Dude, I already printed you a cup. <laughs> 20 well, bucks, 20 hey, bucks yeah, for these. But this Take thing money. is like, yeah, this thing is like cool. He, I like how he has the ten, big tentacles that he can reach out and slap and grab a hold of whatever he's wanting to eat. Uh, and then he can draw it in and then eat it. I don't know, Russ. You, it, it, you did great on it, but that thing's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and then my uh, T-Rex skeleton. And he's are all articulating. His mouth even opens and closes. Yeah, that rainbow silk is... Excellent looking. Oh, I know. I love it. That's easy. Uh, this was one. Uh, I Actually, this was. I, I take that back. This was the first thing I printed on the V400. I remember it now. Because I didn't change any settings. And he was a little rough. Yeah. This was no settings. What's. Yeah, this was no settings whatsoever. This is what I first printed on the V400. This was, I didn't change anything. And he turned out this good. And he's all articulating. He's a spider with tennis shoes. <laughs> I use my 3D printers a lot for work. I'll print, I'll make like little brackets and, yeah. and stuff to demonstrate things to customers with. So yes, yes, Brian. We've done filament uh, resin printing. Yes, I do resin printing. I also have things I've done in resin. I have a resin printer. I just said I have a uh, any Brian cubit. Woodward was asking. Yeah, Brian, I have a, any cubit uh, four mono. I think it is a mono four, whatever. Yep, resin printer. Uh, it actually is right there. That's the dryer, and it's underneath the box because I'm trying to figure out how to point to it. Anyway, it's underneath. There it is. It's underneath that cardboard box, guys. I have filament in it, and I have to keep it covered up. And then this is the dryer is in the orange case. That's my resin printer.
I have done numerous things in resin. Uh, the difference in resin printing and um, FDM <laughs> and the uh, difference between night and day. The resin printing is so much more uh, smooth, so much more um, higher quality, so much more um, accurate compared to an FDM. I'm trying to get over here and get you something to show. And it is the top of the hour. Yes. This was done on my resin printer. Superman. And I chose the gray filament, or gray liquid, I should say. But he is very smooth in comparison to an FDM printer. Yeah, resin is usually for high resolution. Yep. You can print up to five microns. Yeah. With resin. But that's one of the things I did in resin printing. And that's another thing. I've got tons of resin over there. I just need to get back into it and start messing with it again. But yeah, he doesn't have the typical lines that an FDM printer has. I'll tell you, I still can't get over the print quality on this thing. <laughs> well, I know that it's good, but yes, I, um, resin does cost you some bucks. You ain't going to, I don't know of a cheap uh, resin printer. They're very expensive. Here's how good the resolution is. You can get this pipe here. Yeah. You can see the valve and everything and the bolts and the nuts on it. It's so tiny. Yeah. If my camera yeah. would focus in. Yeah, you're not going to get it to focus in as tiny as it is. But All yes, you're right. The bolts and the nuts. Here's a little Model T. Resin printed, the steering wheel and the shifter and the brakes, the pedal. Here, hold that, there. hold that up there. Give me a second. I'm gonna put you on solo layout. Go ahead again. Here's the, here's the. I think it'll if I hold it still, it zooms in. The pipe, the pipe valves and the bolts and the nuts. You can actually put see. Your hand behind it, Dixon. Yeah, that's what I gotta do. Try to. I mean, the resin is crazy. Yeah, there you go. There you, there you go. go. You can see the valves yeah. and the nut, the bolts and nuts on it. It's yeah, crazy. you can actually see each one of them. That's yeah. it's crazy. That's, that's awesome. awesome, man! Wow. Yeah. And this is the Model T, and the the stuff is inside. You can see the shifter and the pedals. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. The steering wheel, the mirrors. I mean, it's out of control. And this took quite a while to figure this out. I did it. I did it in one shot, and it took quite a while for me to get it right. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So, I mean, the realm of 3D printing is the same as I consider a CNC or laser or any kind. I mean, it's not word working, no, but I also understood that we were going into the maker realm in this thing a long time ago. So, I just, I think it's... Um, it's one of the things that once I got the first three, the uh, Ender 3 version 2 and started learning to play with it, I just fell in love with it. And it's one of the things I want to continue to do. Um, there's some other things I need. I want to continue to get back into my CNC. I was thinking about the other, the other day I need to get back into the CNC stuff. But my point being is don't limit your limit yourself to being able to do one thing why not branch out and do multiple things 
Um, because it's not that hard. I'm no genius, and I do all kinds of stuff. Uh, I have a book with, uh, like, if I'm doing, uh, 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 for instance, uh, embroidery, I have a book that I put notations in there. So the next time I want to start my embroidery back up, I start reading through my notations and some of the settings and things I want to do. Same thing with your 3D printing. Same thing with my sublimation. Same thing with my DTF. Same with thing with anything you want to do to make notations, make a book, make a, it's cheap to buy one of those sp uh, not terrible, uh, yes, spiral books and put notations in there and leave it by that printer. So the next time you want to pick it back up, you just read through it and say, Oh, yeah, I need to set it for this and let's go. So it's not that hard. Uh, <coughs> oh. I don't know how to say that hula nami or hula nami embroidery machines. Yes, that is what Mary sells, and uh, Donna has one. Yeah, they're good, and I want to buy one. Trust me. The difference is, I bought the uh, the V four hundred for five ninety nine. The hula nami started at ten thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's a big difference. I bought my wife that quilting machine. That's that's her top end right there. Yeah, so not going, not going anymore. But yeah, I mean, don't limit yourself to some, you know, just like scroll saw, branch out and do some other things. And some of the other things aren't that expensive. Hell, uh, the 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 uh, FL Sun V four hundred is about the price of a Dewalt uh, scroll saw. So it's yeah. not like that expensive, and and it's not anymore. Uh, buy a roll of filament, you can do forty or fifty prints off of it. So for thirty bucks, it's actually cheaper than wood for your scroll saw. And so, you can even three D print weapons that shoot spikes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's so uh, odd that that doesn't surprise me that you have that. <laughs> yeah, especially that flashlight we still haven't got the file for. <laughs> I'll give you that file, and I guarantee you not one of you will print half of well, it. Well, no, you haven't given it to me to see, so. Yeah, know. that's not fair, Dixon. That's not fair. All right, I'm sending it to both of you. Yeah, yeah. And you said that. You, how I'll many times have we heard there. this? How All many right. times have we heard this? I think Just I've wait. heard it go in the last file. 30 shows, so at least 30 times. I got your email. Yeah. You'll have it tomorrow. Okay. Well, By the end of the day tomorrow, and I have to put but it anyway, in so, a dryer uh, back together. Get out in your shop. Yeah. Make some sawdust. I said there's a video. Yeah, make some sawdust. Uh, make some 3D prints. Make, uh, make something on a CD or uh, CNC. Uh, make something. Just get off your butt and make something. <laughs> Just give me sawdust. Lots of sawdust all around me and everywhere. I like it flying all around my uh, shop. And if you're doing 3D printing, it'll stick in my hair. Thank you for watching and God bless. Live long and prosper. Go home, but you cannot stay here. What Chris yep, said. Gotta get out of here. See you later, alligator.